Hey, Joy Blue here, and I am uh, looking to answer this question here on uh, Yahoo Answers. And they're having troubles with queries, and specifically, I think it's a join issue. So they have this database that they have set up, and I'm going to set one up just like it so I can test um, their query and see what they're doing wrong. So they have uh, three different tables. They have a student table, scholarships table, and a GPA table. So first I want to get me a database um, right here and I'm going to get one set up. So I'm going to do a new database and I will call this database uh, SQL Training Online uh, University DB. And I'll just leave everything else to its defaults here and, and I'll go ahead and say OK. And now you can see I have a new university database and there won't be any tables in it except for system tables and so what I want to do is go ahead and uh, create some new tables so I'm going to set up a new query here and I want to create those different tables so let me go over and paste in this these different tables here Okay, so I'm going to mock this up. So create table student. Let's get this stuff formatted here. Create table scholarships. Just trying to get all the specific information in here so I can create these tables. And we need the GPA table. And get this formatted too. Okay, um, so now I'll format one of these tables here to kind of show you what I'm going through. So the ID, I'm pretty sure it's going to be an integer here as the primary key. And then I like to put all my commas in the fronts. And then first name, we'll just call that a varchar. And for our purposes, we'll make it a just a 30 character. Um, same thing with last name. And address, we'll make that 100. City, we'll just make it a 30. State, 30. Um, zip code. Should we do that one as, an, as a varchar or should we do it as an integer? Um, you know, one of the things I always think about is, well, are we ever going to add these up? Um, are we ever going to uh, sum them or average them? Uh, it doesn't make sense to do any of that, and it doesn't. Um, and so it's really, uh, I don't know, it could go either way. And so I'm just going to make it a varchar uh, 5. And if it was an integer, it would be a 4 byte. So there's a little bit of trade off there, but that's what we're going to do. And on phone number, we'll go ahead and make that a... Uh, a varchar, let's see, 3, 3, 4, 10, 11, 12. Let's make that a varchar 12. And if I run this, I should have a table. Now, if I come back over here to tables, I will go ahead and refresh this. And you see, I have a student table now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mock up the rest of these tables here, and then I'll come right back when I finish that. Okay, I'm back and uh, I've got this all mocked up. So a couple of things uh, I'd like to tell you about as I was doing this. Um, the scholarships table is pretty easy. I just put everything as a varchar um, except for the ID which is an integer. But if we come down to the GPA table, we had to make a couple decisions here. 
Um, the GPA itself is, is a number. And when I was telling you earlier, uh, are we going to average it? Are we going to sum it? Um, you know, uh, is it really a number? Uh, unlike zip code um, or maybe social security number, uh, this is actually a number. So we had to make it a float or a decimal. Um, and I just did a float. And so you got to remember, though, if you're dealing with money, uh, you probably want to deal, you know, you could have some rounding errors with floats. So um, decimal might be better. And then also on this, um, this class, there was a note here that says um, four is for seniors. Um, so I'm assuming it's like one, two, three, four. And so we're just going to store some integers in there. And I just want to use the tiny int. Uh, let me show you why I picked that. Uh, over here, I'm on Microsoft site, and the tiny int will store any number from 0 to 255, um, and it's only one byte. So if you're worried about storage, you make it a um, you make it a tiny int. In this case, uh, if you you can use any of these, you can go small int, int, or big int. And normally, I would just probably use an int in these these scenarios. I just want to talk about that a little bit. So um, that's what I did. So now I have the three tables right here. Um, so the next thing is to get some data in these. And a lot of times when I put data in and stuff, um, you can do it in many different ways. I've seen people do it in different ways. Um, I use Excel quite a bit. Um, so let me mock up some data and I'll come back in just a second. Okay, so I'm back and uh, I've created the data. Um, let me show you real quick. I've got the spreadsheet here that I use to create data. Um, I just laid out the tables and created my own fake data in there. And then I used a formula in Excel to go ahead and generate my insert statements. I did that for the student, the GPA, and the scholarships. Um, and I'll, I'll have these available if you want to take a look at them and download them from the, uh, from the blog, the SQL Training Online blog. Um, so Anyway, so what I did is, so we've created these tables, and here's the insert statements to put data into the student table, insert into the GPA table, and inserts into the scholarships table. So now I'm gonna open up a new, um, a new spreadsheet here, a new query, and I am going to um, go back over to the Yahoo Answer. And I am going to grab the SQL statement the way it is that it was listed in the question. So let's toss that in there and let's try to execute that. And it says multi-part identifier GPA dot G underscore class could not be found. Okay, so right here we're referencing um, the GPA uh, table, but you can only reference a table if it's in the from clause. So the only table in the from clause is the student table. And if we want to put two tables in the from clause, we have to do a join. So what we want to do is join the student table. And in this case, I will do an inner join to the GPA table. And whenever we do the join, we have to um, specify what columns we want them to be joined on. So we say on, and I will say student dot s underscore id equals to the gpa dot s underscore id so now we've joined those together one thing else to mention here since i just um since i just created these tables they're not showing up in the telesense so it doesn't know what the gpa object is let me show you a little secret on that if I go to the edit IntelliSense and refresh local cache, then all those go away. So now it sees what the GPA is, table is, and the student table. So, and also notice that it recognizes this. But we have a squiggly here, ambiguous column name S underscore ID. Let's go ahead and try to run it real quick. And so the S underscore ID column appears in both the student table and the GPA table. So the database doesn't know what we want, whether which of those we want. Now we know that they're the same. And I will go ahead and just grab it from the student table. 
And so now that will go away. Execute that, and we've got our two records. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change this case just because I don't like mixing all those cases. But let's run that one more time. And so that is the answer. So that's how we join those together and get the right answer there. So I'm gonna paste this back over to the Yahoo Answers and uh, we'll see if I get uh, the best answer.